did The Last Unicorn become a movie? Like, I wrote the book in 1968 or came out in 1968, I've been at it since 1962, and even quit it at one point because it was driving me crazy. And a gentleman named Michael Chase Walker, who was on the screen as the associate producer, never gave up on it. In fact, it got to the point where Michael actually, when the time came up, paid me the option money, the buyout, to have the rights to sell the film. I remember that because it was it's a tiny check by comparison with what authors get paid today. But it was more than I'd ever seen. My, I remember my immediate reactions. The tractor. We can fi finally pay off the damn tractor. <laughs> <laughs> my son drove around the five acres we had trying to keep the weeds in order. And Michael tried selling everywhere. And finally, and I'll always remember this, this is one of those moments that seared in your head, was driving me to the Bur Burbank Airport to go home to Santa Cruz when he finally managed to mumble that he'd just made a deal with Franklin and Bass. I hated Franklin and Bass. <laughs> I hated everything they ever did. I hated what they'd done to Tolkien. I hated Frosty the Flipping Snowman <laughs> and all the rest of it. And I just hit the roof. And I mean that literally. I stood up in this VW bus and banged my head in the ceiling and scream, Rankin and Bass, why did you just go all the way and sell it to Hanna-Barbera? <laughs> and Michael's somber response was, they were next. <laughs> because nobody wanted The Last Unicorn. Some readers liked it very much, but nobody wanted to take a chance in animated fantasy. And the ama amazing thing is that Rankin and Bass shot the works. It's the best film they've ever made by far. And they did the right thing. They got wonderful voice actors, just about all of whom knew the book. Nobody had to be asked twice to be in it. And they went out and got a real songwriter, Jimmy Webb, to write the score. And they fortunately didn't tell me that they had hired America to sing the songs. Because at that time, my two daughters would not stop playing and singing around the house that God awful horse with no name. <laughs> I have never hated, I like songs, I love songs, I think about songs. I've never hated a song the way I hated that one. <laughs> Fortunately, they're, they're wonderful in the soundtrack. I have absolutely no complaints with the way they sing. So it's a kind of checkered story. There's more to it, certainly. But they also filmed the thing pretty much the way I wrote it, give or take a little. And one of the things I stick around for usually is watching certain sequences. One is the opening, when you're drawn into the unicorn's forest without words, just the music gradually swelling over. Because I wrote that, they filmed it pretty much shot for shot, the way I wrote it. No writer expects that, we just don't. And so all in all, the, the movie was infinitely better than I was braced for, than I ever expected. And I found myself some years back looking at it again with a friend, watching the audience, and just saying, oh my god, the bloody thing's a classic. <laughs>